Brakatia Hau, Brakatia Shai, Brakatia Hau, Brakatia Shai, Brakatia Hau, Brakatia Hau, Bashim Yahu Shai, Bahashim, Chakudash. That belongs to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone True Well. Citations to the hopeful elect out there. You are Kim Tizadakim, that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. I'm the priest Shaman, and this week's topic, I, I want to talk about being leaders of men. You know, I was uh, moved again. By this uh, Andrew Tate situation, and I was listening to some of the things he was saying, and they had him on Tucker Carlson, and he was talking about how men um, are desire, desiring leaders. They want that that leader type figure, you know. That's very rare, you know. The the figures that they're showing you now are very emasculated. Back in the '80s, when you watch a, an action movie, this is what your heroes were looking like, right? They were looking like that. See our men, they're looking rough. Now they got these men that aren't even real men. You know what I'm saying? They wear makeup. You already know the deal. It's a part of an agenda. So they, these people out here in the world see um, Andrew Tate as a symbol. He was saying like, "Look, man, you, you know, he got the money. He got the, he got the money, the looks, the status, and most importantly, he's relatable because it's very easy to sell to women. Um, you can sell lies to women very easily, but men, it's, it's a harder because men." Well, look through shit, you know, they're going to look, wait a minute, you telling me this, but you have not experienced that. And that's from the world standpoint. Now, as I was watching that, you know, everything you do, Re Revelations 3 and 18, you, you filtered it through the eye salve of the truth. And you're like, wait a minute, you know, that, that, that applies first and foremost in this truth. The reason we look up to our apostles um, as men, as leaders, all right, is because they're perfect examples of practicing what you preach and they've been through the things that they talked about you know what i'm saying now if our apostles are like carlton banks from fresh prince of Bel Air and is telling us about hardships he's like what the fuck you what you know about that you know when i go through my personal hell i'd be thinking about times like you know apostle of the cabal apostle of the car talking about when they had to sleep on trains you know what i'm saying and the point is they're very good examples but when you go into these scriptures you find out that the um I'm, let, let me just let the scriptures speak this is 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. It says, Be followers of me, even as I also am of Yahweh Shah. So the Apostle Paul wants, um, is telling you, look, I'm a leader in this position role. All right, and I want you brothers to follow me. Same way I followed Yahweh Shah. And that's what the most, that's what this truth is raising us up to be, brothers. Raising up to us to be leaders in Israel. You know, I always say a good mark of a great leader is one who's willing to follow. And... Um, building upon that, all right, a part of us being leaders in the nation of Israel, all right, is we have to be good examples. And that's the point I want to hit home. We have to be a, an example of what you preach. You can't be telling brothers about order. You yourself is not an order. You know, you can't be telling certain brothers concerning the scriptures and you yourself are not applying them. That's why the scriptures speak about taking your, the mote out of your own eye. So, you know, we shouldn't be getting caught up in no crazy scandals like you see a lot of mother guys, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, you know, Mike Hughes, GMS, for dealing with women, come to uh, dealing with um, underage women, come to find out they get caught with that. You know, they or they they throw another slant at us and come to find out they get caught with that. That should not be happening here because we should be men, uh, leaders, all right, practicing what the scriptures say. That we could be an example onto the flock that are watching us, man. All right, so. If a guy catches, no man should be catching you fucking teaching on his videos and then somewhere out in the world smoking weed or some shit. Then you are not a good leader. You're not a, you're not an example of somebody to follow. You don't practice what you preach, man. Now, this is the book of Philippians 3 and 17. Brethren, be followers together of me. All right, so the Apostle Paul is telling you to follow him. And mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example it says, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. All right, so the Apostle Paul is being home the point of you have us as an example. All right, we're an example of what we say we're about. You see, the apostles, the elders, the teachers, and us coming up, we have to hold ourselves to them same standards, brothers, of being a perfect example of order. Um, and doing what the scriptures say to do, man. All right. If, if you notice out here in the New York, in the New York camp, all right, 
the um when in New York you had the elders, all right. Um, but now it's mainly the apostles and the elders are out in the states, okay, you know, doing the different parts of the work, uh, doing the works in different parts of the states, a lot of the elders. Now, now what does that tell us, the brothers that have been under the elders tutelage, we now have to be leaders and example to the men under beneath us, man, all right? So we have to conduct ourselves in certain ways, that way we don't misguide these brothers. The same way we looked up to our elders and, and still do look up to our elders and follow the blueprint and stuff that they tell us, when we out there, all right, dealing with these brothers that are coming into camp now, we have to be dealing according to how we are taught and being good examples unto these men, you see? So a prime example of, of leading men, again, is leaving an example, practicing what you preach, you know? How can a man look up to you um, when he's going through certain particular shit, you giving him advice that you don't even follow, things you haven't even been through, See? Second, Thess Second Thessalonians 3 and 6. Now we commend you, brethren, in the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly. So that right there is letting you know that um, back then you had certain individuals that were out of order. And the Apostle Paul is saying, withdraw yourself from them, man. All right? You had this... Just for bringing him up, a war out there in Mississippi. He talked about, ah, oh, you're not supposed to just cut a guy off, and when you, you know, he leaves the camp, just cut a guy off. And brother, I mean, the scriptures is telling you to cut a dude off. Withdraw yourself from him. You see, <clears throat> you know, because that's that's a part of the order. You know, and if that lot falls upon you, and you feel that you're in an unjust position, like the Apostle Elder Ricardo was speaking about in his last lesson, then suffer wrong for you Yahweh Shai. Believe in the Lord, and the Lord shall and will work it out, man. You know? But not not all men have faith, as the Apostle Paul said. It says, Now we commend you, brethren, in the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, of Mashiach, that you would draw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the, not after the tradition which he received of us so pretty much if he's not following him anymore in that what we have taught him mark him and avoid his ass all right for yourselves know how he ought to follow us for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you neither did we eat any man's bread for naught but wrath with labor and travail night and day and the apostles do that you know the, our apostles today don't have to work. You know, they're the priests. They, you know, they should just be good off the offering. But guess what they do? They work. That's what the apostle Paul said. And he said, look, he says, neither did we eat of any man's bread for naught. For we wrought with labor. So they work for themselves. And travail night and day. So they're putting in work, man. That we might not be chargeable to any of you. Right. So that's about being a burden to brothers. And we were speaking, we were addressing that issue. Um. Uh. You know, recently, you know, not taking advantage of the brotherhood, okay? That you ought to work, and that's a, that's an example, all right? If you're telling a brother that, uh, you know, look, I, we have to work. Um. Don't be lax. I'm um, trying to put your burden on another brother, all right? Because you don't want to work this job, or this job is not for man. Get your fucking ass to work, man. We gotta, we gotta be men. How how are you gonna be a leader and some how are you gonna be leader somebody following you, all right? And you bitching about work. Scriptures tell you that you're gonna get it by the sweat of your brow, man. All right. So you should not be using this body. Um. You know you shouldn't be a subscription service, basically, man. All right. We all able body able to work. Now I'm not saying be over righteous, okay. But you have to use wisdom, you know, because there are times you could be doing something wicked and you don't even see it. But another brother sees it and tells you and then you have to acknowledge it, you know, and a, a part of that is being unreasonably chargeable to the, to the brotherhood, man. You see. All right. So, again, brothers, for clarification, don't be over righteous if you in a in a if you know a super tight position. You're, that's what that's what we're here for. 
But it shouldn't be some shit like, you know, you want, man, you know what, I want some liquor or some shit. Um, let me have another brother. Let me let me get a collection for me because I need some liquor. Come on, man, that's that's wicked. And the Lord could judge your ass for that, you see? So look at the example how the Apostle Paul went about it, all right? He could have went there. You know, he was well-beloved by the church. He could have just, um, you know, get money in and not even work. But he said, no, nah, I'm going to work. And that's what you see our apostles do today, you know? As long as they're able to, you know, as long as they're fit and able to, okay, and that's how we ought to be. We have a, we have a brother in the in the camp. Um, I'm a big him up, the elder Barack, Barack Kabar, man. All right, he he has disability issues, okay, but I don't see him take advantage of nothing. He don't take advantage of no nobody, and that brother is technically disabled, man. All right, so if anybody should be in a position to where he's getting bread every, it could be that brother, but he doesn't do that. Why? Because he wants to be an example as a leader. He, the brother is a leader. He's an elder, all right? Of what brothers should look at and say, okay, this man is following the scriptures. And this is the key to leading men. All right? Key to leading men is being an example and practicing what you preach, man. All right? And we're going by the guidance and the leadership of Yahweh Shah, which is written in this book. <clears throat> it says, not because we have not power... See, so the apostle Paul saying, "Look, if we could, we if we if we wanted to, we could do that." You know, it says not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. See, so the apostle Paul wants you to be this way. All right, an example, and I mean, this is just one example of of how one should conduct himself. The, the overall lesson is you have to be an example unto the men that you're trying to lead. Okay, and within that example, I'm you know I'm doing a little micro. Examination of the Apostle Paul talking about working. You know, brothers, we ought to work. You know, and if we're in particular um, our situations, all right, a part of this truth is dealing with hell, is, is dealing with affliction, dealing with hardships. If you just want to jump over that hardship, the little second you get into a jam, bail me out, bail me out. Well, how you how do you build and learn from this particular hardship, man? You know what I'm saying? It says, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Right. So, Spirit got me speaking on that, so I'm going to speak on that, brother. So, we got to work, man, all right? There's no excuse for brothers in Great Millstone, all right? Being in, us being leaders and examples, all right, to take advantage of brothers in this particular way, man, all right? Got to work. Get it by the side of the brow. If you don't work, you ain't going to eat, man. And our apostles are perfect examples of that. We ought to be per perfect examples of that, all right? Just because you got the brotherhood shouldn't mean, you know, should be, um, um, not working man all right or nitpicking i don't want to do this i don't want to we got to make fucking sacrifices man uh, a majority of us damn near all of us we don't want to work so it's like you know, what's the point you know who wants who the fuck wants to work for esau none of us want to do it but we do it because this is our duty as men and the scriptures are telling us this is how we're gonna eat it says for we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly working not at all but our busy bodies. That shit is crazy, man. They ain't working, but they ain't everybody's business, man. So, word got around. But, word got around to the top, if you will. Word got around to the Apostle Paul. But what them guys should have did back then was should have rebuked those individuals right away. Shouldn't have to get to the top. You see? Not everything has to go to the top, man. All right? That's another thing, too. If you're building, building ourselves up to be leaders and examples in Israel, not everything has to go to your superior, man. We should be able to acquire what we learned from over the years from our leaders, all right, and apply them to the to the, to the the body um, that we super over, oversee, if you will, I'm trying to get my words together correctly. You see? Not everything has to shoot to the top, man. All right? The apostles, we've been learning... And then the elders, we've been learning enough after them. We don't have to bug them every fucking second, man. And everything, this is to the top. This is to the top. This is, nah, man. See? Got to be leaders, man. The Lord is looking for us to be leaders, men, leaders in the nation of Israel. That's what the 144,000 is, the governing body in the kingdom to come. All right? 
It says, Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Yahweh Shai that with, with quietness they work and eat their own bread. I mean, hey amen. I wasn't even thinking of hopping on that, but that's what the scriptures is hopping on right now. All right. You got to work, make your own bread, man. You see? Um, if you, a part, if you're going to learn to govern over a nation of people, you have to learn how to govern over yourself. All right. Scriptures tell you that he that, um, rule over, rule, um, he that ruleth his spirit or rule over his spirit is better than he that taketh the city. All right. So if your spirit is, has bad spending habits, has bad money management, then you have to control that first and foremost on how to govern yourself. All right? Okay? If you are, if an opportunity presents yourself and you're like, oh, I don't want to do that, but you know damn well it's gonna, you're going to be in a jam this next week, then, nah, man, you have to govern over yourself to say, you know what? I'm not meant here to be comfortable. I'm not meant here to do what I wish to do. You know why? It, 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 in terms of like, you know, nitpicking which job that job will have to do. If you're in a position where you need to work, get the job, man. All right? And don't care about what the fuck this world thing, man. All right? I don't want to do the This world looks down on that job. That demon might be in your mind, man. Got to put that shit to the side. Fuck all that pride shit, man. All right? Whatever presents itself, you're able to do it. You go for it, man. See? But ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Wait a minute. <laughs> it says, and if any man obey not our word by this epistle. So the modern day epistles, like you do the videos. So you say, like, look, man, we put up a video. And the guy's not going along what we're saying in the video. Don't have no business with him. Don't have no company with him. And it says that he may be ashamed. All right. Hey, this guy in Mississippi comes to mind, man. All right. Because he's, he's saying the exact, y'all shaming brothers. Y'all distance yourself from brothers. Wait a minute. We follow the scriptures. What you're following is your emotions, man. Okay. And we already know that the mind is desperately wicked. You know, leaning upon your own understanding, leaning upon your feelings is not the way to go. And that's another thing about being a man. And men are known for logic. Logic goes back to the Greek word logos, which means reason. It's supposed to reason things. How do we reason things? Through the scriptures. Not our feelings. Our feelings will get us killed, man. If we was running completely off emotions, then you definitely know we can't be no leaders. Because we're going off fields. No, we can't go off fields. We have to be going off the scriptures, man. Even though this dude, Andrew Tate, when he makes out all them points he be making when he's on them podcasts or whatever, and the stuff that go viral, all he's doing is just speaking logic. Logically, men and women aren't equal. What's the big fucking deal about that? But people in this world operate off feels. It hurts my feelings, mainly women, but this is a woman, gynocentric-led society, so feels is what's governing everything, man. And not real. <sighs> Yet... Count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. So it says, yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. So, and that's another thing too. We have to rebuke one another, man. We have to rebuke one another. This right then and there, man. It, we shouldn't be having a, you know, you know, this brother is doing this, this brother. Is, why are you telling me? Why don't you tell that brother? You know? Hey, man. This Ak right here, bro, you know, he did this, he did that. Well, you know what, Ak, when you saw him, see that, address him, let him know. You know? This thing is not about going to another brother and and and, and, and this art and that art. You build up and shit. That's, no, that's not how the scriptures say to go about things. You know, if your brother a friend, put him to the side, talk to him man to man. If you, if you see an issue and a fault in the brother, there's nothing wrong with telling the brother right then and there. So letting things build up, man. See? Now, 
Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always. By all means, the Lord be with you all. That's that. Um, what greater example to follow than our Lord Yahweh Shah, the ultimate leader? John 13 and 12. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, red letter now, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well for, so I am. If I am then your Lord and Master have washed, if I then your Lord and Master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example. See? That's the Lord, Yahweh being the ultimate leader, was always leaving examples for the apostles. All right? Always, that's, 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 that's the key thing, man. Being an example on to the younger men. All right? If you are to be a leader. We're going to be, Lord willing, the hopeful elect, Lord willing, we are the elect. We're in the governing uh, body, all right? We're going to be examples to look at. You know, so Yahweh Shai washing the feet shows that um, a man um, pretty much shows that even though he was a master, he was made himself a minister. All right, which a minister is a servant, and that's what we are here to do. We are here to serve. This is why we put in our videos week in week out because the whole full elect. Are servants unto the nation of Israel. The prophets are servants. Okay? It says, If I then... Okay, I read that part. Verse 15, For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is that is sent greater than than he that sent him. So, in in, in other words, too, whatever Yahweh Shah went to through, we're gonna go through. You know, because what he he made himself an example. He, what was some of the things he went through? Hardships, his family coming against him. All right, choosing rather to be lowly than to be rich. Um, following every single law, statutes, commandments. All right, dealing with demons of his own people. All that stuff we look at as, as examples to say this was the leadership role our Lord was in and he dealt with it and he went on that cross because the scriptures speak about bearing your cross. Everything that we go through in this truth, we go through the scriptures, look at what Yahweh Shah went through and it should be fuel to us that he was a perfect example of what it means to embody the truth. All right, and we're going to follow that. See? Nobody, nobody wants to follow a man that does not practice what he preach, man. See? It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, and I also want to make this clear, because one might say, is there confusion with the Lord? Because the Lord, the Bible says, um, put your trust not in a guide. So somebody might say, oh, you guys are men pleasers, you follow men. Well, the thing is, you got to follow men that are following the scriptures. That's the key point, all right? You don't just follow any willy-nilly dude out there. You follow men that are, that are practicing it and being perfect example of what the scriptures say to be. Those are the men that you follow. Those are the ones you mark. That's when the scriptures speak about mark the perfect men, all right? It says, if you know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. And that's that's a that's a huge thing too. Applying the scriptures, again, practice when you practicing what you preach is a version of applying the scriptures. You're right. If you call yourself a leader in the nation of Israel, if you call yourself a prophet of the Lord, a member of the hopeful elect, are you practicing what you preaching? You know. And the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun. So, when the cameras are off, are you still being an Israelite? The Lord knows. The Most High knows every man's heart. So we. That godly fear should not just be when the cameras are on. It should be on 24-7. Never know who's watching, man. Never know who's watching. 
There was a guy that was amongst us. Um, um, he called himself following us. And a brother saw him smoking, looking right at him, smoking weed and shit. But he didn't recognize the brother because it was a COVID situation. He had the mask and all that. And the brother was just looking at him like, you know, you so you call yourself come back, come back sorrowful. Next thing you know, you out there smoking weed, thinking nobody will see you. But the spirit had to, oh, had a man of the Lord see you. Out of all these people, out of the millions of people in New York, the Lord had a man of the Lord see you. So the most I was always watching, man. All right, all you being an example, all you being an ambassador or an ambassador of Yahweh Shah, which is a representative, you know. It says, if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. I speak, let me make sure that's okay. Well, that, that was the point. Last one, so Yahweh Shah is a perfect example, man. Um, and that's why he's the ultimate leader. We are, we are to mimic that, you know. First Peter 2 and 21, for even. Here for even here unto why am I reading like that? For even here unto where ye are called, for even here unto were ye were ye called one more time, for even here unto were ye called, because Yahweh also suffered for us, leaving us an example that should follow his steps. So Yahweh went through the sufferings. And he gave us examples of how to deal with it. Yahweh Shai went through everything, man. All right? He ultimately received the glory, but he went through everything. Um, he practiced brotherly love. He practiced being a servant unto his brethren, prophesying, fulfilling the prophecies, everything, keeping the Lord's session commandment. He's a perfect example, and that's why he's the ultimate leader. So that's how we ought to be, brothers. All right? If we want to lead, but if we want to be leaders or the hopeful elect in the nation of Israel, we have to be examples of what we preach, all right? And what, you, and what we preach is the gospel. That's the point I wanted to make. I'm going to give all praises <coughs> to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rakakodash, the blinds of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, True Well, Salutations to the whole for the elect out there, you Akim to Sadakim, that do the singing the utmost truth and sincerity. Shalom.